Octane can mean multiple things and that can lead to some confusion when discussing it. However, after watching this video, you'll know all about Octane and you'll know how not to waste money at the pump. With the prices I'm seeing at the time of this video coming out, it's more important now than ever. This video is aimed at both beginner and intermediate automotive knowledge background, so if you're a beginner and some terms start getting complicated, hang in there because we will either define the terms later in another video or they will become self-evident as you continue to watch. So, typical gasoline engines burn fuel to push a piston down, which is turned into spinning force, which propels you forward. One important part with the fuel there is that it pushes the piston down when the piston is not on the way up. If the piston is on its way up and the fuel ignites before it's supposed to, that's called pre-ignition. This can cause damage to internal components and even if you somehow had an indestructible engine, you would still be losing power. Pre-ignition can occur for multiple reasons like hot spots in the combustion chamber or simply having high compression in the engine. You could even have incorrect ignition timing, but no fuel out there is going to fix that, so we're going to skip that issue in this video. One more important term to know is knock. It's similar to pre-ignition, but occurs after ignition. On the surface, this sounds nearly irrelevant, but since it's kind of like two separate explosions colliding with each other, there's a lot of potential for an engine damage here. A lot of the factors that can cause pre-ignition can cause knock as well, so a fuel that is good at resisting one will almost certainly be good at resisting the other. In any given engine, there will be fuels that will work well and fuels that are prone to knock and pre-ignition. So we have the problem laid out, how do we fix it? Well, we can use a fuel that is more stable under high pressure. How do we know we're getting that kind of fuel? Well, fortunately, there's a rating system out there for just such a quality. Unfortunately, different countries have adopted different systems, but have used the same word in them, octane. Before we get into the different rating systems, let's address the word itself. What is octane? If you're familiar with the basics of how we extract fossil fuels, you'll know that the crude oil that comes out of the ground is refined into different components, such as paraffin wax, gasoline, and natural gas. Although you might think these are very different chemicals since at room temperature, wax is a solid, gasoline is a liquid, and natural gas is, well, a gas. However, all three of these are made up of hydrocarbons of varying lengths. As the name implies, they are simply made up of hydrogen and carbon. The smallest hydrocarbon is methane with one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. Add another carbon atom and you have to add two more hydrogen atoms to keep the carbon's valence electrons happy. A two carbon hydrocarbon is ethane, three carbons makes propane, and four makes butane. After that, the prefixes start to sound familiar as they take on shape prefixes, followed by ane. Five carbons, pentane. Six carbons, hexane. Seven carbons, heptane. Then, with eight carbons, we get to octane. Octane is an actual chemical that can be found in gasoline. However, because of different ways the carbon and hydrogen atoms can be arranged to make an octane molecule, one version or isomer of octane can have a different octane rating than another form of octane. Why can't anything be easy? Okay, okay, time to take a break from chemistry and talk about those rating systems. Let's start with the research octane number, or RON. The research octane number is defined as the percentage by volume of iso-octane in a mixture of iso-octane and n-heptane that knocks the same intensity as the fuel being tested. Okay, that sounded like we jumped right back into chemistry, and we did, I'll give you that. But that just made things easier. No matter what the fuel is, you can simply test it to see how well it resists knock. If it resists knock like pure iso-octane, then it's 100 octane. If it resists knock like a mix of 90% iso-octane and 10% n-heptane, then it's considered 90 octane. The RON rating is used as octane rating in many European countries. That's not the only method for rating octane. There's also the motor octane number, or MON. This is a more difficult test that runs an engine at a higher RPM, temperature, and workload than the RON rating. Most fuels end up scoring a lower number on the MON test than on the RON test. The octane rating that the United States and Canada display on their pumps is known as either the AKI, the anti-knock index, or as R plus M over 2, which you may remember as the weird algebra that gas stations put on their fuel pump buttons. Those two variables in the R plus M are actually RON and MON. They're in parentheses, so you add them together before dividing by two, which, because there are two numbers, means you're just finding the average of the two. For example, if the fuel tested as 95 on the RON and 87 on the MON, you would have an AKI rating of 91 octane. So, is it possible to get an octane rating of over 100? 
It is, and race fuels are available with over 100 octane as well as high ethanol content like E85. While some of these high performance fuels offer other benefits and drawbacks, those differences can serve as confusion about the differences in standard fuels with different octanes. What do I mean by that? There's a common misconception that you can get more power, fuel mileage, or other benefits from using a higher octane fuel. If the compression ratio of your engine has been changed, or forced induction like a supercharger or a turbo has been added or improved upon, those are times when you may need a higher octane fuel than what your vehicle's owner's manual says. Otherwise, you should just stick with whatever your owner's manual says, and any higher octane going in will just be throwing money away. Using a lower octane rating than what your owner's manual recommends can lead to power loss, reduced fuel mileage, and even engine damage that won't be covered under warranty. A few naturally aspirated cars may be able to get away with slightly lower octane in high altitude environments where atmospheric pressure is lower. However, most cars, particularly modern forced induction cars, keep the combustion chamber pressure up to a given boost level regardless of the atmospheric pressure. If you've ever tested a higher octane fuel and felt like there's been an improvement in performance, then it's either in your head or there's something causing detonation and or pre-ignition that higher octane fuel is hiding for you. There may be excessive carbon buildup in the combustion chamber creating a hot spot or increasing the compression ratio by just enough to make the lower octane fuel ignite improperly. The problem could get worse and lead to having to get even higher octane fuel or engine damage. Well, there's a third thing that can be going on, but it's not the octane. Some gas station brands will put additional detergents in to help clean the injectors, combustion chamber, and other components that will differ based on what the fuel is exposed to in your particular engine. If that detergent does what it is meant to do, then after a tank or two, you should be able to return to the recommended octane rating and not have any issues. What's not clear is just how much of that detergent is added compared to what's already in the lower octane ratings, and if the higher detergent level gives the same effect as a bottle fuel system cleaner. If the fuel system cleaner in a bottle is more potent and effective, it may still be less expensive to just use the recommended octane rating and whatever fuel system cleaner is on sale at the time. Solutions that require a mechanic may not have the initial cost benefits, but the damage that knock and pre-ignition can do to an engine gets way more expensive than a diagnosis and repair right now. Give your engine the right fuel, be aware of the sounds that it makes, and take care of it if something is wrong. How does ethanol come into play? Ethanol can boost the octane rating of a fuel so any given octane rating is easier for the refinery to achieve. Octane ratings are including the ethanol in the mix, so E10 at 87 octane is still just 87 octane. If you would like to know more, check out our video on ethanol and fuels and you'll be quite well versed in gasoline.